I just, you know, wanted to mention you know, how much I enjoy working with veterans, really. Um, you know, I, when clients come in or prospects come in, I find out they're a veteran, you know, there's automatically a connection there. Sure. And, you know, a lot of places, a lot of times when you leave, you know, an employment, such we have a lot of PNG retired, they leave PNG, they really miss, you miss the people, right? Yeah. And so, you know, throughout my career, since the military, I've enjoyed working with veterans. Um, Okay, everybody, thank you for joining me. I'm very excited about, this is a very rare occasion here at Stonehouse. I want you to understand, I have been asking Barbara for uh, probably two years at least, if not three, to get on camera with me. She's just one of the smarter folks I know. Um, she's an attorney. She's a she's a Navy person. Let's put it that way. Right. Um, and today we have a really nice conversation that we're going to talk about here because uh, because of Barb's middle uh, military experience, uh, we're going to talk about planning, financial planning, and investing for folks in the military, in the service, um, and some different different variations, things like that, Barbara. But before we get into the details, I'd love for you to just introduce yourself sure. and tell sure. everybody who you are. Well, I'm an advisor at Stonehouse, um, also a veteran. Like you said, I served five years in the Navy um, after graduating from the Naval Academy and also an attorney. Yep. Yep. You kind of like you list those things like they're all like little things, yeah. but there's a there's a heck of a commitment behind each each and every one of those. Yeah, things, it was so. great experience. You know, each phase of my life has been a great experience. I, do, I need to rewind the tape. Did you mention awesome volleyball player as well? <laughs> An awesome volleyball player. Yeah, you, you <laughs> I've can't since say retired. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, that's a that's a really good segue, right? So yeah. we're going to talk about retirement, but we originally when I asked you to kind of put something together that we could talk about on this topic, uh, I, I was not surprised that you came back with a very detailed list as you do with a lot of folks that you work with and you cover all the bases. But I think recently you're just telling me before we started rolling that you kind of think it'd be better to go through it in a little bit of a different way, sort of like three different um, examples of, of how somebody might be in the service or leaving the service. And you want to talk about those yeah, three different yeah, types? Yeah, because, you know, everyone's journey, you know, when they go in the military, they might think they're going to make a career of it or circumstances happen. So they might get out before retirement. So there's some different things to um, consider if you're retiring from the military or if you're separating before 20 years. So, you know, for example, let's take, let's talk about Susie from Tunkhannock. She graduated. Okay, Susie. Yeah, Susie. Let's go. She graduated in 2023 and enlisted in the Navy. We'll, we'll make her, you know, join the Navy. Um, that's the right branch. If you know. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and um, so she she graduated 2023, enlisted at 18. And because she went into the service after 2018, yep. she's part of the blended retirement system. There's two different types of retirement systems. And okay. we'll touch base, you know, touch on the other one um, in a different scenario, but okay. she's part of the blended retirement system. So she, but let's first start with her, her parents give her some advice when she goes into the Navy because her parents are clients of Stonehouse. And, nice. you know, here at Stonehouse, we like to help our clients, but also their family members as well. I like that even your hypothetical clients are Stonehouse, our Stonehouse cl clients, of course. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, we advise them, you know, make sure you tell Susie to open up a Roth thrift savings plan, also known as a TSP. Mm -hmm. And um, a thrift savings plan is a government funded retirement system similar to a private company's 401k. Okay. So Susie listens to her parents and she opens a Roth thrift savings plan and she starts contributing as much as possible into that savings plan. Um, you The max for 2024, the max amount is 23,000. Mm -hmm. So there's also Roth thrift savings plan and also a thrift savings plan, to, you know, similar to a traditional IRA. Right. Um, that's pre and post tax money. So, but because her income's low enough, she, you know, puts it into a Roth thrift savings plan. She's living on the ship. She has very low budget, so she's contributing as much as possible. She's so, also an exception that she listened to her parents. Her, right she listened to her parents. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's another important thing. That's Make great. you know, really try to like, get your kids to listen. <laughs> Sorry, so th she's on the ship. Yeah. So after a year, she deploys. So mm -hmm. when you're deployed in a combat zone, say her pay is tax free. So she's able to take advantage of that tax free income and put it into a tax deferred, you know, 
thrift savings plan, the Roth thrift savings plan, and that money will never be taxed, you know, as long as it stays in that Roth status. You know, after she retires, she can roll it over into a Roth IRA and it'll still be tax deferred. So that's pretty awesome, you know, when you're making that money in a combat zone. So she does that. She maxes it out. Um, She also worked during high school and had a Roth IRA because she had some earned income. So she's able to also contribute to a Roth IRA while also in the military in addition to her Roth thrift savings plan. so she- And the benefit of the Roth is really just the, the power of time and that compound interest. And then you just strip away the taxation of right, that, right? right? I mean, it's just such a great- Absolutely. Yeah, I wish they had those when I was- Yes. Talking, but they didn't. <laughs> they didn't. Move on. <laughs> uh, so she's really taking advantage of saving as much as possible for retirement. So the years go on. And also part of the blended retirement system, though, is um, the military is also contributing. So okay. this is different from the, the older legacy program. But after 60 days, the government puts in 1%. And then after two years in service, they're matching 4%. So she's definitely taking advantage of that match. Um, now, Barbara, does, if she's not contributing to that, do they put in? Well, no, they they match it. Okay. Yep. It's a, so it's a match. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so, you know, she's getting on uh, now year 15. She's starting to think about retirement. And we're fast forwarding into the future here since, yeah, she, right. just, since she just re- went in. But um, she's starting to think about retirement. She comes into Stonehouse. We run a retirement plan for her. Um, you know, and her Retirement's looking really good, even though she has a family to support as well. But um, she's been saving as much as possible, and she plans on retiring after 20 years, so she's going to receive a pension. Okay. So the blended retirement system, the pension is calculated. It's 2% times the number of years in service times the average of your highest paying 36 months. Okay. So, um, so she- there's a formula. I, and that's important that you bring that up because a lot of people – even outside the military, they don't realize they kind of refer to the pension as their 401k too. You know, the, right. it's like this all inclusive word, but mm-hmm. you know, some places have both. And so what you're saying is the pension has its own formula. Right. That's its yeah. own pension on top of the thrift savings plan. So, right. right. Similar to like a private company, they have their pension, but they might also have a 401k that they're contributing to. So similar. So um, as a retiree, she doesn't have to worry about health insurance because she's covered through TRICARE. You know, you have TRICARE while you're in the military and the retirees are also eligible for TRICARE. Okay. And so, you know, but Susie wants to come back to Tunkhannock after 20 years and she's only 38. So she's getting a pension That's from- crazy. Yeah. She's re- <laughs> she can retire from the military at 38, come back um, to Tunkhannock and she takes advantage of the VA home mortgage, which is 0% down. And she finds a house here in town, um, puts zero down and decides, you know, I'm 38, I can now have a second career. And let's say she gets a job at P&G and works um, there for a while, and she potentially could have two retirements and really be set up. And meanwhile, of course, she stops at Stonehouse, able to roll over her Roth thrift savings plan into a Roth IRA, and we're able to help her through her retirement and her next phase in life. Susie sounds amazing. Susie sounds amazing. I, I, want I her wish life. I was Susie. <laughs> yeah, I want that life. I, I want an right. entire hometown filled with yeah. um, vets with amazing retirement plans and all within blocks of, of our one of our main offices. Right, right. Absolutely. <laughs> that's fantastic. Okay, yeah. so, that's, so that's that's Susie's scenario. Yeah, that's that's retiring from um retiring from the military. So another scenario we see is separating from the military before 20 years. So you're not going to take a you're not going to have that pension unfortunately. So let's say Susie's brother Peter joins okay. the military as well at 18 and unfortunately Peter is injured in the military mm. and he's not discharged right away but he's not doing what he loves so he decides to get out after his contract is up. But preparing for that, he makes sure it has an emergency fund, um, you know, three to six months of cash on hand. And, you know, he's also think about health insurance. You know, what does he do? He's just not going to he won't have TRICARE anymore. He may get health insurance through the Veterans Affairs, um, maybe another employer. 
here in Pennsylvania, we have Penny for the healthcare exchange, or and there's also a tr- transitional health insurance. Okay. Similar to, you know, if someone left private company, they have Cobra. Um, there's a transitional health insurance for about a, 180 days. Okay. So, but let's say, you know, he has a service connected disability. So he gets in touch with a veterans organization such as American Veterans and Vets who help him with his <clears throat> um, VA disability claim. And let's say he's approved and he's able to get health insurance at the the Veterans Affairs. Um, So he's fortunate enough to have that. So because um, Peter has a service-connected disability, there are certain programs available to him, such as the Veterans Readiness and Employment Program. So this program helps uh, veterans... If they need to go to school, they'll help them, you know, funding for to pay for school and help them get a job. And they have like a counselor that works with them to get them a job. So, and that, again, that's for veterans with service connected disabilities. Okay. So he takes advantage of that. He wants to be an electrician, come home to Tunkhannock, of course, and be an electrician. Right. And um, that program helps him get the education he needs and helps him find the right job for him. Okay. So he comes home, of course, takes advantage of the 0% down VA mortgage yeah. and settles down and finds a job here. In the meantime, um, he partners up with Stonehouse and it rolls his Roth thrift savings plan that he opened um, and contributed to during during his time in the service gotcha. into a Roth IRA and able to see that grow tax deferred. Okay. So, Great. So, now he's, but he's, the question I had for you earlier was he's not eligible in that example for the pension because he doesn't have the full 20 Right. Years you have in. to serve at least 20 years. Okay. Yep. And it's, it's, you get it or you don't, right? It's not a, there's no partial. Right. No, yeah. no, no partial. So he would, if he was, um, had a disability, there is, you know, a VA disability claim. So you would get a monthly check of that, okay. you know, depending on how many dependents you had and, you know, percentage of disability. So there is some type of compensation he may be eligible for. Okay. Yeah. So, and then, <clears throat> you know, there's another scenario that I'd like to talk about for you, Susie and Peter have a brother or sister. Eh? John. John. Let's say, okay. let's say, let's say John. John's the dad, so we need we need to make okay. make him a little older. So, because I want to talk about the the other retirement system. Okay. So he went in a while ago before 2018. So he's part of the he's um participates in the legacy or high 36 retirement system. Okay. So this one's different, whereas they don't there's no match into the thrift savings plan by the government, uh, but it's also calculated different. So it's two and a half percent times the number of years, times the average of your highest paying 36 months. So it's calculated a little bit higher than than the new retirement system. But let John, let's say John enters a little bit later in life um, and went to JAG Corps. He entered after law school, say, and he stays in longer. So he puts in, maxes out his 23,000 into the Roth, in combination Roth, thrift savings plan and the thrift savings plan and um, can also have an IRA or Roth IRA on the side. But he then when he turns 50, he's eligible for catch up contributions similar to the IRA contributions. Mm -hmm. But he's eligible for catch up contributions, which right now in 2024, it's 7,500, 7,500 a year. So uh, then he does that at age 50. And then thanks to the SECURE Act, that was 2.0 that was passed in 2022. When he reaches age 60, he now, the catch-up contribution is 10000 a year hmm. from 60 to 63. So say John takes advantage, putting as much aside for um, his retirement as possible and does that 10000 a year. So he's able to put $33,000 into a thrift savings plan a year. Uh, there is a new rule change in 2026 that if you make over a certain amount, you have to, your catch-up contributions have to be into the raw thrift savings plan. Um, for the sake of when this was passed in 2022, that income was 145000 for reference. Okay. So um, he takes advantage of that, those catch-up contributions. Um, again, retires, has TRICARE for health insurance and a pension and is able to roll that, roll those thrift savings plans over into IRAs and Roth IRAs um, to grow you mm-hmm. know, for his, yeah. for his retirement. And again, partners with Stonehouse. That's pretty much, you know, that's a typical retirement, but just wanted to touch upon those, you know, extra catch up contributions that you can have if you stay in longer, if you're older. Yeah. So it's very similar to folks who are not in the service, but right. there, there's definitely um, 
certain nuances that that would make a difference. It's good to have somebody that knows the system like you're describing, uh, has experience not only with the military itself, but with the systems and, and what they have at their fingertips. My question to you, Barb, is when someone, no matter what stage you're in their career, and you're mentioning Roth contributions and or just t straight up TSP con contributions, so basically after tax or pre tax, right. um, don't you worry? I mean, they're going to look at you, right? And they look at you and they say, which one do I do? Do I do both or one or the other? Which is right. it? And then you just basically weigh the factors, right? Right. So basically weigh the factors depending on what your income is, you know, your household income as well. Um, and see what, you know, especially in this area, you know, might be a member of a family limited partnership and getting gas income. So there's different factors to determine uh, which one which one to contribute to. Yeah. But what's different with the Roth thrift savings plan, as we're familiar with Roth IRAs, is there's no income limit. So, That's you right. know, anyone, you could be making you know, 500,000 and you can still contribute to the Roth thrift savings plan. Yeah. So. And so a lot of people don't realize that because they're, they're fortunate to have access to a Roth at their employer. Right. Right. You know, right. Whether it's military or a private employer, but uh, most folks uh, often don't get that opportunity or many folks don't. And so if you're just a, uh, just a, a average bloke that wants to go ahead and put money into a Roth, you probably have you're probably going to be capped out once you start making a certain amount of money. Right, right. Yeah. So, and that's but that's what's nice about the Roth thrift savings plan Absolutely. is that you don't because a lot of people when you retire, you know, in our positions we start talking to people about converting to you know Roth conversions. Yeah. So if you can take advantage of you know getting as much into an after tax status and growing tax deferred early in your career, um, such as you know in my example you know, the better. Yeah. yeah. But, and I'm glad you bring that up. I mean, just a, a lot of uh, today, in today's world, I, I, you know, you, you page through Facebook, Instagram, whatever social media you're on, and these folks come out with these big, loud voices about do this one thing or these three secrets and you'll have all the wealth you want. And I was like, it, it's not that way. Right. It, and the real world is different. And you need to, I mean, what you just mentioned are wonderful things that are at people's fingertips, but if they have something going on in their life, they might only want to do this option, not both, yeah. or vice versa. Right. And they need, you know, sometimes they don't know that answer. So to to reach out to someone like yourself. Yeah, just absolutely. Makes it and that's why I mentioned before, you know, work with a lot of families as well. You know, a lot of people, yeah. you know, kids that are in college or just starting out, you know, I'm always happy to help give them my advice, you yeah. know. And uh, that's see, just like the biggest, I think that's the biggest compliment a client can give us if they get excited and say, can you talk to my, my kids right, right. as they start their life? You yeah, know? they might not listen to you, but maybe they'll listen, <laughs> maybe they'll listen to me. <laughs> oh, and your wonderful example, uh, John has great, wonderful parenting yes, skills that's right. over Peter and Susie. But, that's right. Um, all right. So I the, I liked your examples and you, you hit the different age ranges. You hit the three main different types of, of, of pathways, if you will, yeah. journeys through that service. Um, anything we're missing? No, not really. I just, you know, wanted to mention you know, how much I enjoy working with veterans, really. Um, you know, I, when clients come in or prospects come in, I find out they're a veteran, you know, there's automatically a connection there. Sure. And, you know, a lot of places, a lot of times when you leave, you know, an employment, such as we have a lot of PNG retired, they leave PNG, they really miss, you miss the people, right? Yeah. And so, you know, throughout my career, since the military, I've enjoyed working with veterans. Um, when I entered law school, I was still in the Navy, actually. And but by the time of my third year, I wasn't in the Navy anymore. But I was fortunate enough to work for the veterans clinic and represent Vietnam veterans and appeals to the VA for claims and nice. medical care that you know they should have been receiving for years. And so you know I was very fortunate enough to assist them and help them. And then you know now in my the financial sector. And I'm so happy to be able to help people transitioning from the military into civilian life. There's just so many programs also available for veterans mm -hmm. um, that, you know, the military and the veterans organizations really want you to succeed, you know, mentally, physically, financially. So there's lots of programs there. And I'm happy to guide, you know, these people, uh, veterans transitioning, you know, from the military to civilian life. So... Are you telling me that you treat your veteran clients? No, 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 <laughs> of course not. No, I know no. there's a soft spot. There's a connection. Right, yeah, common thread. absolutely. It, it makes total sense, and I don't blame you for it. I admire you for it. I admire uh, any military service. I just think it's amazing. Uh, I don't personally have it. I feel like I would have done well, but yeah. I also think I'm intimidated by it. So uh, I just give kudos to everybody that's done that. And um, I'm super proud when 
people find out about your background and everything. And I'm glad that yeah. you found your pathway found its way here to Stonehouse. Yeah. You've been a, a big, uh, big plus for us to have you on our team. And um, I did notice in your example that you made, was it Peter or John that you made in and put him in JAG? Oh, yeah. John. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So the yeah. father went there. So. Always got to work the law in there. Somehow. I know. It's, yeah, it was made it a little personal. So, <laughs> well, and I just had, I'll, I'll tell you after we start, stop rolling, but I just had a client that we share that's give you a wonderful compliment yesterday. So, um, uh, thanks for the work you're doing inside of our company for your clients and advocating for them. And I appreciate, I guess I give you a huge thanks for forcing yourself to come on camera. <laughs> I know you hate being on video, but you did a fantastic yeah. job. And because of that, your punishment is that I will ask you once again. Oh, to do great. More. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Barb. Yeah. So if you want to reach out to Barb, uh, uh, reach out to our, our website, stonehouseretired.com. There's probably a link in this video to reach out to her as well. And we'd love to help you. If you have any questions about what she just talked about or any other things on our website, just reach out at info at stonehousemail.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Hope this video was helpful and we'll see you on the next one.